So you just got your PlayStation portal and you're realizing you're having performance issues, maybe some stuttering, the connection's not as good, it keeps dropping. You also might be having battery life issues where it's not lasting as long as you'd like. And you can't use a wireless headset, which kind of sucks because the PlayStation headsets aren't out yet. But I found a hack that should help for all of these, or a few hacks actually. I'm actually in the middle of editing the unboxing video in first impressions, but once I found these out after some research on Reddit and testing things out myself, I wanted to make sure more people can have a better experience with the device and not think it's kind of crap, you know? Because it actually does work well when it does work. So for this first tip, you're gonna wanna have a direct connection from your router to your PlayStation 5. I realize this might not be as easy for everyone, depending on where your router is located. You know, for example, right now my PlayStation is in the basement, which makes it a little bit difficult to get a clear connection. So it's running off a of wireless. I've never had issues with it. But now you have the PlayStation portal, which is also on wireless. It's like two wireless signals. So like the chance for lag and latency is a lot higher. So if you want to improve the connection, get yourself one of these, get the length you need and plug your internet modem directly into your PS5 if possible. Another tip that's kind of weird <laughs> is I noticed when I went downstairs and I was connecting to my PlayStation, right? I was playing, I was testing it, I was getting some stuttering. I was trying to figure it out. This is remote playing, right? My PS5 was also sending a HDMI signal out to my audio video receiver. So the sound was blasting downstairs in the basement, even though the, the TV wasn't on. So that was kind of interesting. And after doing some research on Reddit and testing things out myself, a lot of people have been having success with unplugging their HDMI cable while the PS5 is in rest mode and then connecting and things move a lot smoother. I don't know what it is. I don't know why if the PS5 knows that the portal's in use and it's doing remote play, why it's sending a signal out through the HDMI for audio and video. So this is kind of a quick hack to boost performance and I notice a difference right away. Everything runs a lot smoother now, almost like I'm right there. So again, kind of a weird thing because you, you don't wanna be unplugging your HDMI cable, that kind of sucks. But it's been working for a lot of people so thought I'd share it with you guys. Go ahead and try that out, see how that works with that plus the ethernet connection should improve performance dramatically. Another thing I've been kind of messing with is certain games have performance or quality mode. Well, now that I don't really care about quality mode because this is only a 1080p display, for a lot of games like Final Fantasy VII Remake, I've been just putting it on performance mode, right? And that usually drops the resolution a bit. Well, it doesn't matter here because this is also just a 1080p display, which looks great by the way, so you can't even tell the difference. So I would go ahead and do that with the games that offer that support or that support that as soon as possible. That'll, you know, tweak those settings. They might actually improve performance even more. Now it's a battery life. Uh, most people have been getting about three to five hours, right? Maybe more. There's a few settings that are important to know about that will make battery life a lot easier. So if you get your PlayStation portal, right, you swipe from the top right over you're gonna get these different settings. So what I'm gonna do now to improve battery life, one thing for sure, right, brightness. If you lower the brightness, your battery life will be better. I personally don't have a lot of time to game nowadays, so I am playing at full brightness because I usually don't play for four hours straight, especially not on this. So if you go to settings now, um, you go to display and brightness, Right, you have your screen brightness. Another thing that affects it is the PlayStation uh, light bars. So if I turn those on, right, these turn on, you can kind of maybe see them here a little bit. Yeah, so those turn on just like the PS5 controller. I personally don't like using this. It's actually kind of annoying. It's I like playing in the dark, so it's kind of distracting to have this, this bright light. So what I do is I go ahead and shut that off. That way it's never on and it should basically save some battery life. And then you can also mess with the volume settings, right? You can toggle the volume up and down. The louder the volume is, the more battery life it probably drains. So those settings should help you with your battery life if you want to get a little bit longer battery life. Again, I don't play for as long, so it's not an issue. I play at full brightness. I also don't mess with the, the audio too much because I am using a headset. 
And now this is probably the most frustrating part for everyone. Let's talk about the biggest issue is that you can't use any wireless Bluetooth headsets with this. And Sony is saying it's, you know, because of their special 3D audio and the headsets aren't even out yet. And that's kind of the crappy part. So you're kind of stuck using your other headsets, which is, you know, it's, it's fine. But the fact that you can't use 3D or the fact that you can't use a wireless headset is kind of crappy. I normally use my really big comfy headphones for this, right? You would go ahead and take this and just plug it into your, take this and just plug it in. There, now you have your headphones connected. Great, but it's really crappy that you can't use the wireless headphones. So there is a hack that works. I was messing with this last night and I am gonna be able to use my Pulse 3 headsets from Sony. And this might work with any headset basically that has an adapter that connects to your PS5. So when you wanna use these wirelessly, right? This is Sony's own brand, but again, most wireless headphones that come with a little dongle. So this little dongle you plug into your PS5 and this is what transmits the, the wireless signal to your headphones. This is already plugged into my PS5, right? So once this is on and you turn on your headset, right? Since this is being remote played from your PS5, if it's already plugged in, just use your headset and it works even better because it's going, it's coming, the signal is coming directly from the PS5, which is the first uh, source and it works great. This is my way of using a wireless headset on the PlayStation portal right now and it works flawlessly. I've tried the other methods. I know you can get like a Bluetooth adapter to plug in your AirPods and all these other things, but the signal is crap and it kind of tends to drop. I don't know what causes it, but Basically, if you want to get around that and you want to use wireless headsets right now, which is what most people do, just go ahead and use whatever is connected to your PS5. In this case, the Pulse headset. Anything with a dongle should work, and I've had no issues. So I hope these hacks and tips help you guys out with your PlayStation Portal and solve some issues you might be having at launch. Hopefully, Sony will be updating a lot of this stuff through some firmware updates or whatnot. If you like these kinds of videos, please give it a thumbs up like and subscribe. I'm going to be putting out more content. Stay tuned for the unboxing and first impressions and gameplay video coming out. And if you're interested in something else, check out this video right here.